So, when we come to the case of a use of a mirror symmetry here, uh, we therefore have the operation 2 followed by this inversion center uh, immediately on acting on the twofold and therefore we get a mirror. So, in a mirror symmetry we have uh, equivalent points at x, y, z and x, y bar z. So, the uh, axis again is the unique axis again is the b axis, unique axis again the b axis. So, x y z goes to x y bar z and the b axis being unique. Uh, if uh, the c axis is unique the equivalent points will be x y z and x y z bar and if a axis is unique it will be x y z and x bar y z. So, uh, again you see that there are 2 in the unit cell and therefore, 1 in the asymmetric unit. So, the value of z is equal to 2 and the value of z prime is equal to 1. The uh, system to which it goes into again can be a primitive lattice which is now going to give us the space group P m and it can also give the space group P uh, sorry C m. C m. So, we can therefore, have 2 possible space groups the primitive with a mirror as the. So, th this is this is in fact, the way in which one represents the space group. We are going to do more seriously the space groups later on, but this is the way. So, uh, one, once we know the crystal system, we tell first the lattice symmetry. The first we sell the what the type of the lattice we have and one, once we know the lattice type whether it is primitive or C centered or whatever as we go further. In case of the triclinic there is only primitive, but in this case it is primitive and C centered lattice. The C centering can also change to A centering or uh, uh, B centering depending upon the nature of the unique axis. In case the B axis is unique the standard convention is to have the C centered lattice. So, as I mentioned that when once the C centering comes up you will have an addition of half plus along x and a half plus along y for these 2 equivalent points thereby generating 4 equivalent points in which case z is equal to 4. So, you will generate 4 equivalent points. So, the whenever we represent therefore, a space group the first we represent the lattice and then followed that with, with the uh, indication of the point group symmetry. So, the point group symmetry with the lattice now will tell us the space group. So, a space group representation is a lattice plus the point group. So, this will tell us in fact something very interesting that <coughs> we are now dealing with 3 dimensional object a crystal is a 3 dimensional object. We have identified the crystal system into which it goes into with a b c alpha beta gamma based on that we have decided the nature of the crystal lattice that crystal lattice can have uh, the crystal uh, system. The crystal system will have uh, different kinds of lattices depending upon the Bravais lattice conditions. You remember that in a uh, in a primitive uh, 2 dimensional rectangular system we have a primitive lattice and a C lattice the little p and the little uh, c. So, similarly we will have a capital P and a capital C in case of the monoclinic symmetry we have the lattice plus the point group now representing the so called space group. So, the representation of any space group therefore, will tell us the complete 3 dimensional information associated with the system. So, when once we have the space group information we automatically know the nature of the lattice, the nature of the point group, the equivalent points, the number of equivalent points in the unit cell and so on. So, that way the uh, entire representation of any crystallographic symmetry along with the presence of systematic as the uh, sorry along with the presence of symmetry operations are given 
in a monoclinic system and in this particular case. So, similarly monoclinic system with a 2 we have already discussed, monoclinic system with a mirror we have now discussed, we can go to this system which is now a combination of a proper and an improper axis. So, this corresponds to a proper axis, this corresponds to an improper axis operation and this is a proper plus improper. So, simultaneously operating at a point. So, at this particular point which is up here, the uh, symmetry operates in such a way <coughs> that we have this the point where the two fold is located. So, what happens now is x y z will go to x bar y z bar and then each one of these points now we will see the mirror plane which is perpendicular to it. So, the, the proper and the improper operations are uh, uh, operating simultaneously. So, the proper operation will take x y z to x bar y z bar which is the two fold rotation and each of these points now we will see the mirror plane and therefore, x y z will go to x y bar z and this one which is x bar y z bar will go to x bar y bar z bar. Let me write it down so that you are not confused. So, if you have an x y z, x y z will go to uh, x y z first will go to x bar y z bar. This is the two fold operation. Now, we have generated therefore, two equivalent points. Now, these two equivalent points will now see the mirror which is perpendicular to the two fold <laughs> axis, the improper axis. So, x y z will carry over to x y bar z and this one which is x bar y z bar will carry over to its mirror reflection which is x bar y bar z bar. So, therefore, the value of z now is equal to 4 and what are the types of space groups we can have here? We can have P 2 by m and C 2 by m. And these will have now 4 equivalent points z equals 4 and C 2 by m we will have z is equal to 8. So, there will be 8 equivalent points. Now, I want you to go home and work out what are all the possible special positions that can come in this situation. For example, we can locate the object on the two fold symmetry, we can locate the object with respect to the mirror. So, in what way these operations will come up <laughs> is something which we will see uh, as we go along. But at this particular point, we have covered the monoclinic symmetry. We have covered the monoclinic symmetry in such a way that we look at all the three possible point groups which belong to the system. We have looked at the crystal lattices which are now P and C, P and M. Uh, we have looked at the lattices which are possible P and M. Let me go through it with a laser pointer. We have the three projection, the stereographic projections shown here. The first one corresponds to 2, the second one corresponds to mirror, the third one to 2 by m and we see the symmetry operations generating the equivalent points. Uh, just to keep the interest of the chemists, the pharmacists and uh, maybe even some of the faculty members and also those who are not so very inclined to mathematics, biologists for example. So, just to keep their interest going at this stage, what I can say is that if there is a system if there is a biological system or a chemi chemical system which goes into a monoclinic symmetry and it crystallizes in such a way that we have a P monoclinic P lattice which will appear. We will not know at this moment how we can identify whether it is a P lattice or a C lattice that will come much later when we do the diffraction experiments. At this particular stage we now identify whether it is a primitive or a C centered lattice. Then let us say the representation of X here is now replaced by our biological molecule. It could be a small uh, amino acid, it could be a peptide chain or it could be a protein. In the long run it could even be a, a virus or a collection of viruses, particles, proteins, more than one protein and things like that, protein crystallizing with a steroid molecule. So, you have that stored in this particular X and if the space group turns out to be P2, then what will happen is there will be such uh, two units in the unit cell. Here there is a uh, there is a small suggestion to the biologist that is if there is a biological molecule and that biological molecule has what they define as subunits in the biological molecule like for example myoglobin and hemoglobin. 
Myoglobin has a single subunit whereas hemoglobin has four subunits. Now, the presence of these uh, subunits uh, need not utilize the symmetry. So, the asymmetric unit of myoglobin can still have four molecules of individual myoglobin units and then it may go into a space group to which it belongs to. Uh, let us say it goes to P2 then we will have 4 plus 4, 4 units of my myoglobin accumulating as a hemoglobin molecule, but there will be 2 hemoglobin molecules in the unit cell and as a consequence we will effectively have uh, the 2 big units of hemoglobin crystallizing in the unit cell. So, it is not necessary that when we point out an X it is one single point, it is a collection of all possible atom positions. So, what I read as X, Y, Z could be X1, Y1, Z1, X2, Y2, Z2, X3, Y3, Z3 and Xn, Yn, Zn where n is the total number of atoms representing that particular molecule. So, the asymmetric unit if you now consider, the asymmetric unit will have this uh, all the 4 units of myoglobin defining the hemoglobin molecule. The hemoglobin molecule has a internal symmetry, it is a molecular symmetry. So, that particular internal symmetry when it crystallizes may or may not be used in that situation. In the, in the case of a realistic situation hemoglobin does not use that center of symmetry uh, which they, they are the symmetry that is present in the 4 subunits. So, therefore, that is referred to as a non crystallographic symmetry. So, for biologists when they read their, uh, their papers you should remember that that is a non crystallographic symmetry. In fact, the presence of non crystallographic symmetry is utilized in structure determination of very large molecules. Uh, there are various ways in which people can use this information to the advantage of solving the phase problem and therefore, determine the crystal structure. So, this I thought is a point which I should mention at this situation. So, that there is no confusion when we discuss with respect to x, y, z and say the x, y, z goes to x, y bar z in a mirror operation. It means that the entire set of atoms associated with the molecule will go to the other molecule. So, that way we have a situation where it is possible to now identify the molecular symmetry and that molecular symmetry need not be associated. Even though Kitagorovsky said that molecular symmetry should be associated, that is a symmetry which is associated with a single molecule. Here there is a subunit which are related by a symmetry. So, that is a non crystallographic symmetry. So, there is a difference between a regular symmetry in the molecule, single molecule and a non crystallographic symmetry associated with individual components. So, this is something which I thought you should bear in mind and that is a crucial point which we should uh, uh, discuss when we do the structure determination protocols. So, we have now covered the uh, point group uh, descriptions of uh, triclinic and monoclinic and we will now proceed to the orthorhombic symmetry and then go for the description of individual point groups here. What I did here was to also overlay the diagram which you have already seen which tells you the, um, the uh, orientation of the axis when we have a situation where there is more than one axis of rotation. So, when we go to the orthorhombic system we have 3 axes of rotation which will intersect at a point and Euler's theorem makes sure that if we have 2 of them the third one will automatically come. So, the way in which the orthorhombic symmetry therefore, comes is an intersection of 3 2 fold axis. So, when we represent the uh, corresponding point group we should be able to represent all 3 2 fold axis in this diagram and that is how 2 2 2 is a diagram where we have shown the 2 fold axis which comes here at the center which is along the direction which is perpendicular to us. There are 2 fold axis of rotation also associated with the uh, with the x axis direction and also the y axis direction. So, that way the 2 fold axis operation is uh, quite interesting here. Suppose you take this point x, this point x now goes over to that point x, this is the first 2 operation which is let us say about the x or y or z, it does not matter which one in the case of an orthorhombic system. So, we will say x, y, z now goes to x bar, y, z bar that means it is a 2 fold perpendicular to the y direction. Then the 2 fold perpendicular to the x direction and the 2 fold perpendicular to the z direction will also simultaneously operate on that. 
and as a result you get the 4 equivalent points. So, uh, the 4 equivalent points I want you to take it as a home assignment where you write what are all the 4 equivalent points which I have written here. It is very obvious by looking at the nomenclature how they should be defined, but then this is interesting to see how you will define it. For example, how would you write this to that? If I give that example then you will write all the 4, so I would not give the example except to say that you do see the relationship between these 2 turns out to be a relation which is inversion kind of because you have a op x and this is a open circle and a x mark here. But what are the equivalent points of these? How do we how do I get that point to this point? Notice the the uh, circle which is going round here is also specially marked it is uh, there is a darkening of that circle. So, you have therefore, a 2 fold axis perpendicular to that, a 2 fold axis along the x direction, a 2 fold axis along the y direction or mimicking this representation. The same representation is carried over down here and you see a difference in the equivalent point positioning. Uh, for example, in this particular case the 2 fold axis which is along the z direction is shown here. So, obviously, this is telling us that x, y, z when, uh, when operating operated by this two fold rotation will go to minus x, minus y and z. So, here the rotation for x, y, z going to minus x, minus y, z can be written. Then you end up with two mirror symmetries. One of the mirror symmetries uh, will uh, generate uh, a mirror symmetry which is perpendicular to this direction which is the x direction and the mirror symmetry perpendicular let us say this is the x direction conventionally and this is the y direction. So, both x and y directions represent the mirror. Now, the question comes in the case of the mirror symmetry you had earlier an x y z and the mirror goes it goes to x y bar z. Now, here again if you see the x coordinate here x y z if you take this as the x y z how will you generate that point? You will generate that point using the two fold rotation using this particular two fold rotation and then inverting it. Okay. So, because of the fact that you do the inversion operation twice because of the presence of two mirrors here you will get the same object repeated here. So, the write down the equivalent points of M M 2 that will be the next home assignment for you when you write the equivalent points of M M 2 compare the equivalent points of M M 2 with that of 2 2 2. So, these two space groups are very rare in occurrence, but when they do occur they will show some certain special properties and those special properties give rise to systems which may show some non-linear effects and so on. So, these, these space groups are very crucial for such situations. The next space point group is the MMM symmetry where we have the three uh, two fold axis now becoming simultaneously mirrors. So, this is in fact equivalent of representing the uh, corresponding full symmetry as I can call it is 2 by m 2 by m two by m. So, there is a simultaneous operation of two fold as well as the mirror which we saw in the monoclinic case earlier on. So, a similar operation occurs here and you now see that the number of equivalent points in case of 2 2 2 is 4, number of equivalent points in mm 2 is 4, number of equivalent points in mm is 8. That is because we have the two fold operation perpendicular to the mirror we will take it onto itself and therefore, you will have 8 equivalent points. All these 3 symmetry operations correspond to this 2 2 2. So, this now orthorhombic symmetry is identified with a minimum symmetry of 2 2 2. The point group symmetries therefore, become 2 2 2 m m 2 and m m m. The 2 by m 2 by m 2 by m is the highest possible symmetry that can be associated with an orthorhombic system. The number of equivalent points here is 4, the number of equivalent points again in m m 2 is 4 whereas, the number of equivalent points in m m m happens to be 8. The restriction of course, which we have not written, but which you know by now very clearly is the fact that we have an A, we have an A equals B 
the not equal to C, none of these are equal whereas the angle between them alpha, beta and gamma and gamma are equal to 90 degrees. So, the three angles are at 90 degrees to each other, they are mutually perpendicular to each other and we have this uh, uh, system which now represents the orthorhombic system. So, just like the monoclinic system was able to generate the two, the two, the mirror and the two by m, orthorhombic generates the two mirror and two by m in all three directions because we have the three mutually perpendicular directions. So, therefore, orthorhombic symmetry uh, represents an additional set of symmetry elements which can go along with it mainly because of the fact that the angles alpha, beta, gamma are 90 degrees with respect to each other. So, even though the uh, geometry associated with the orthorhombic symmetry is simpler, the corresponding geometry which results in the accumulation of all the molecular symmetry inside the unit cell is more complicated. Uh, to, I let me make this sentence a little more clear. So, if you take a triclinic system, in the case of a triclinic system, you get only two uh, equivalent points if it is p1 bar. If it is p1, you get only one equivalent point. So, the complexity associated with the molecule is less in the unit cell. So, in the unit cell, either there is one molecule or two molecules, the relation between these two being only a center of symmetry. If you go to the monoclinic system again, it is not so very complicated because again you will get two equivalent points in twofold, two equivalent points in mirror and four equivalent points in two divided by m. So, the number of molecules you can put into the unit cell therefore will be either two or four or it sometimes depending on the special positions, it could be even one or two. So, the uh, distribute the way in which the molecule now looks at it is to see that it wants to arrange itself in a comfortable way. And as the molecule wants to arrange itself in a comfortable way in the unit cell, the triclinic and the monoclinic ones are preferred when you have very flexible molecules. And that is the reason why many of the uh, organic systems with their flexibility and functionalities attached to the organic moieties and so on, they want to go into the crystal systems which are triclinic, monoclinic, orthorhombic. Very rarely they go to higher uh, crystal systems and in when they do go to higher crystal systems, they will have some exotic properties to display. Otherwise generally most of the organic systems crystallize either in a monoclinic or in an orthorhombic system because of the fact that the functionalities have lot of uh, freedom uh, associated with them. On the other hand, if you look at the inorganic materials, these inorganic materials are basically built up, uh, up upon uh, tetrahedra and octahedral units. It is only an association of tetrahedral and octahedral units with linkers which are again not so very flexible. And as a consequence most of the inorganic materials they go to higher crystal systems, higher that is say syst crystal systems with higher symmetry. So, tetragonal and beyond, tetragonal, hexagonal, cubic these are the preferred space groups in inorganic systems. So, it is very interesting to note this point that the geometry associated with the surroundings of an atom effectively decides what crystal system it should take. And therefore, uh, the question of uh, whether the molecule decides the crystal symmetry or crystal symmetry decides the molecule is still unanswered in the sense that uh, the, uh, the nature is eventually trying to minimize the energy. So, the minimum energy configuration is what will occur in a crystal. So, in fact, uh, if you look at a crystal therefore, the way in which the molecules assemble uh, what we eventually refer to as supramolecular assembly in a crystal molecule is the best way in which molecules can arrange in a supramolecular assembly. And this is referred to very often as supramolecular molecular assembly par excellence. A crystal represents a supramolecular assembly par excellence. I, I mentioned it the in between the discussions of our point group just not to keep the continuity going, but also to give you advanced information of uh, what we are going to do when once we understand the methods of structure determination. So, this is very crucial. So, now we have finished one of these uh, multi axis situations. 
we can go to the further multi axis situations. Uh, so, we will go to the next slide which is now the uh, trigonal system a three fold system. Interestingly when we come to the three fold system it is it is always decided you know the three fold system can exist by itself which is what is shown here the three fold the three with a mirror and a three bar system. Notice the difference between this point group 3m and the previous point group which we discussed with the monocular system which is 2 by m. The 2 slash m represents a two fold symmetry and a mirror perpendicular to that whereas in this particular case the 3 and the mirror symmetry are operational together. That means there is a second axis that can be associated with the three fold symmetry. So, three fold symmetry therefore can exist by itself or a three fold symmetry can exist along with another in other words we can have a improper rotation or a proper rotation associated with it and that will generate different space groups uh, sorry point groups. Obviously, different space groups depending upon the type of lattice we associate with the trigonal system. What we will do hereafter is bring in the space group information associated with these much later when we discuss the Bravais lattice along with the uh, combination of Bravais lattice and the point group symmetry mainly to avoid confusion because the number of space groups will now increase more or less exponentially. Because up to, up to orthorhombic we have a large number of systems in fact orthorhombic itself can have a primitive lattice, a body centered lattice, a C A B C centered lattice and also a uh, uh, face centered lattice. So, since orthorhombic symmetry can generate so many lattices the corresponding space groups which can which can generate are quite large. So, uh, instead of uh, going into the discussion of the space groups with the orthorhombic system right now we will finish up the assignment of the point groups with the rest of the crystal systems and then come back to the discussion of associating lattice symmetry and the point group symmetry with individual crystal systems. That will also revise whatever we have done now for you once more and as a result it will never be forgotten. The whole idea is that this concept I do not want any one of you to forget whether you are a mathematician, whether you are a physicist, biologist, chemist. The way in which the symmetry operations happen in these crystal systems because of the geometrical restrictions which get put due to the presence of the symmetry we should be able to appreciate it the moment we see it. So, we do not have to study this again when once we embed it this in our mind then we can describe any crystal structure and the description of crystal structure by someone else done in a uh, let us say a, a paper or a review we can easily comprehend. When the reviewer for example in his paper says uh, you know the molecule is generated due to the presence of the two fold symmetry we now know how these are generated. And to that extent the understanding of the point group symmetry is crucial. So, we will go and understand all the point group symmetries before we go further. So, in a trigonal system the three fold axis can exist by itself that is just the three fold axis as is shown in this place in this diagram here. So, this will now take this x y z and then take it to this position which is 120 degree rotated and another 120 degree rotation brings it to the 270 position and the 270 position comes back here. And since it is a simple three fold rotation by nomenclature we write this a triangle and a darkened triangle that represents the three fold symmetry. And also the fact that in the in the three fold symmetry we also take into account whenever we now associate the three fold symmetry with respect to the unit cell trigonal unit cell we always associate that with respect to the z axis. So, the three fold is referred to the z axis. This is a very very crucial point because when you now see the location of the three fold symmetry in a trigonal system and the location of the three fold symmetry which you must have is a minimum symmetry the information that should be present in a cube for example. When you go to a cubic system you will not find the three fold symmetry in the first position of the description. In other words the first position of the description will now represent the three fold symmetry along the z axis. In a trigonal so, there is a space group like for example, I will there is a point group uh, like for example, here 3 2 and there is also a point group 2 3. 
So, the space uh, the point group 3 2 represents a trigonal system whereas, you will see here a point group 2 3 represents a cubic system. 